ساتر يا ساتر يا ساتر يا ساتر يا ساتر Well, tonight, the fighting in the Middle East has taken an ominous turn. Israeli ground forces have now entered Gaza. That's a major escalation. Can you just paint us a picture of how dire the situation is right now? This is what we know so far. There are currently no IDF ground troops inside the Gaza Strip. The IDF air and ground forces are carrying out strikes on targets in the Gaza Strip. So. Despite reports, we can tell you this morning that there is no ground offensive from Israel into Gaza so far. It's just gone at 2 a.m. in Jerusalem. You know, Ali, Ali and I have both been to Israel. It's, it's mm. a wonderful country, and one of the wonderful parts of it, um, obviously the people, but the fact that they can mix um, Israeli Arabs and also um, Israeli Jews together. I mean, there's the four quarters. I mean, it's a mm. special, special place. Mm. And to have them warring on the streets like that in the gang warfare is. But I must say, last time that the, the violence escalated, and it was nothing like this. It was very, mm. it was very, very different. different. It was rockets and all, but we weren't seeing these these ground attacks and assaults. Yeah, it feels like the same movie, but just slightly different. אזרחי ישראל, אנחנו מתמודדים במערכה עם שתי חזיתות. החזית האחת, עזה. אמרתי שאנחנו נגבה מחיר כבד מאוד מהחמאס ומשאר ארגוני הטרור, ואנחנו עושים זאת ונמשיך לעשות זאת בעוצמה רבה. המילה האחרונה לא נאמרה, והמבצע הזה יימשך ככל שיהיה. Tonight, Israeli tanks and armored personnel carriers headed for the border with Gaza as Israeli military officials say they have begun a ground assault into the Palestinian enclave. Despite reports, we can tell you this morning that there is no ground offensive from Israel into Gaza so far. It's just gone at 2 a.m. in Jerusalem. We'll get as much up-to-date information as we can for you. Allah. The thing is, we're in sort of a situation where we go through the cycle of, of warfare every few years. Hamas attacks, uh, Israel reestablishes deterrence, and then we start all over in a little bit. Uh, it has been quieter, but we haven't had an all-out ground war since 2014, but there's been several major escalations since then. I've been appalled by the media reporting, but honestly, Melanie, as you well know, this is not new. This happens every time there's a conflict involving Israel. I can't quite understand it. I don't know whether it's victim politics, whether it's, uh, you know, exaggerated anti-racism turned into anti-Jewish uh, feeling. I don't know what it is. We haven't heard much from the Middle East, have we, recently? Hasn't it been fairly peaceful? No. No? It's just that we recently? haven't been covering it very we, much. Right. No, we've had other worries to think about, but it, it still remains very volatile. This was already the heaviest fighting between Israel and Palestinians in years. Israeli airstrikes pounding the Gaza Strip since dawn. Two million residents fenced in with nowhere to hide. We were really heading towards a catastrophe. Sirens fill the night sky over Tel Aviv. From their rooftops, terrified residents watch the missiles descend on their city. The worst violence in seven years between Israel and Hamas militants is intensifying tonight. The United Nations Middle East envoy warning hostilities are moving towards a full-scale war. If they want to escalate, the resistance is ready. If they want to stop, the resistance is ready. If they want to move their hand out of Jerusalem, the resistance is ready. This is the message that we delivered to all the sides and to whoever is involved. But miles to the north, this renewed conflict and the history behind it has spawned something else. 
This is Batyam near Tel Aviv. Israeli Jews attacking Arabs. In cities across the country, there are riots between the two sides. In Lod, between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, the Arab community were protecting the mosque into the evening. And late tonight, the violence spilling into the Israeli streets. A Jewish mob attacking an Arab driver. Brutal scenes tonight, and we are seeing those violent mobs on both sides in multiple Israeli cities. And that's what makes this round of violence different and even more alarming. Palestinian Israelis and Jewish Israelis living in close proximity, turning on each other. <laughs> and closer to Tel Aviv. Palestinian businesses were ransacked. The wave of violence has hit dozens of cities and regions across Israel. It's the worst between communities living alongside each other in decades. Israeli officials say they are more violent than the protests that led to the Al-Aqsa Intifada in 2000. More than 60 Palestinians have been killed, including 16 children. This is a crime, this man says. They were civilians. It's the worst violence in seven years. Hamas has launched over 1,600 rockets towards Israel the past few days. Uh, or more than 1,000 rockets uh, overnight uh, last night, uh, which is quite unprecedented and extraordinary. The air raid sirens sounded through the day. In the skies, the trails of Israel's Iron Dome missile defense system. It shot down most of the Hamas rockets. The Israeli communities here are used to attacks from Gaza, but not this many in just a few hours. This is the third time it's happened since we've been here. Uh, Miss Omar, in one of her statements about these very events, she said, Israel airstrikes killing civilians in Gaza is an act of terrorism. Palestinians deserve protection. Unlike Israel, missile defense programs such as Iron Dome don't exist to protect Palestinian civilians. It's unconscionable to not condemn these attacks. Listen and look at those pictures. You are looking at Israeli missiles exploding in Gaza overnight. And people on both sides of the conflict, I have to say this, are very passionate in the support for their group. Very passionate. But I actually want to look past that. Is that's what a lot of people right now are doing uh, today. They're trying to obviously back up the side that they belong on. The deadly fighting follows weeks of near nightly protests over forced evictions in East Jerusalem. Do you accept what UN organizations, what human rights organizations are saying? You are an occupying power that is violating international law. I can see that you've uh, gathered and put together all the quotes. The point is, is you and people have to understand and realize you're not talking and interviewing me in uh, 1967. We're talking about 2021. Sir, I've Israel, quoted to you quotes the state from of Rupert Israel. Colville in May the 7th, 2021, and I have done my research and I make no apology for it. The, these need to be addressed. That's okay, I understand are, that. Are you, are you saying to viewers, the UN, UNESCO, uh, Amnesty International, I've got a quote here if you want to hear it, where they, where they say settling civilians in occupied territories violates international humanitarian law and amounts to a war crime. Are you telling viewers the UN, the International Court of Justice, Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch are all wrong and only you are right? I'm saying... No, what I'm saying is, is that Jerusalem well, look, if, is not so, occupied... Hang on, so you said no. If they're not wrong, then you admit that you are an occupying power that is violating international law by your intervention. The target, says the Israeli military, are Hamas and Islamic Jihad leaders and their installations. The material damage is immense. And yet today you had a 13-story residential apartment building in Gaza targeted by the Israeli Air Force destroyed. How is that not anything other than a war crime, a deliberate attack on a civilian target? Hamas had warned of a major strike on Tel Aviv if Israel targeted residential buildings in Gaza. A little after sunset, after telling the families who lived here to get out, Israel's military did just that. The Israeli Prime Minister had warned of a gathering intensity and pace of attack. The army said the building was in part used by Hamas. You know, I think it's uh, actually very disfortunate that people are trying to equate 
the IDF responds to Hamas as a terrorist organization. Uh, Israel acts in accordance to the international law. Uh, we target only Hamas targets, and every target that we're firing at uh, is being chosen very carefully. Hussein Hamad was one of several Palestinian children killed in Israeli airstrikes on Monday. <laughs> We don't have time to get into an argument about international law. Suffice to say that most human rights groups criticize Israel for violating human rights law, and they criticize Hamas. But you leveled an apartment building. I think you gave them a one-hour warning to get out of the building. You think that's in line with humanitarian law to bomb a civilian apartment building in Gaza? You know, Hamas is using the Palestinians in Gaza as human shields. They're firing rockets at Israel from within centers of civilian population because they want to see these sites. They want to force Israel to respond. Hamas purposefully makes their civilians the shields to their offensive points. That's not hyperbole. Think about that, what they do to their population. I don't want to just speak about this in platitudes. But police tactics are under scrutiny after this video was shared on social media of officers storming a family home in the northern city of Haifa. They can be seen beating an unarmed Palestinian Israeli man. <laughs> and to the south of Tel Aviv, the city of Lod has been put under a state of emergency, the first in an Arab community since 1966. You were mentioning earlier in your show about the casualties and the children that were killed, uh, and you said that it was results of uh, IDF strikes. But yeah. we know for a fact that six of these children, for example, were killed because of Hamas rockets were misfired and fell in within okay. Gaza Strip, well, and they killed the Palestinians. So I'm taking any report just coming to, from just the to be clear. I, I just want to be clear here, Elad. I just, I just, I just want us to be clear. Let's find common ground. Are we now saying, is your position, because I'm sure militant groups are listening in from across the world, is your position that apartment buildings are fair game if there's someone inside you don't like? Is that the position of the Israeli government tonight? You know, you say that you don't want to go into international law, but the question that you're asking is exactly a question of international law. It's a question of what is a legitimate target. It's a simple question. Are apartment buildings okay to bomb? If you, because I'm sure Hamas will say that. If it's a military uh, target, then it's a legitimate strike. If Hamas is using the target in order I'm, to hide weapons, in order to use it as a, a, a commanding a, a post, okay, then so, it's a legitimate strike. But you said you don't want to go there, so... So... Okay, I mean... No one can look at this and, and, and see anything other than a, a tragedy uh, that has happened here. Um, but the images that are coming out of Gaza are truly horrific. It seems that what Israel is doing in Gaza, Gaza is totally disproportionate to what is happening here. I would uh, beg to differ. I think that what we are doing are specific strikes against military targets inside Gaza that are part of the Hamas and the Islamic Jihad's military infrastructure. We watched the Iron Dome intercept some of them as they flew north. Let's go in, let's go in. Come on, Mohammed. Hamas claims to be the defender of the Palestinian cause, striking their occupier. Israel will strike back harder still, and the diplomacy to break this cycle isn't there. But how did this, this um, current attack start and why? Well, you've got a number of separate issues. You've got the Israelis who are trying to expand into East Jerusalem, which the Palestinians say belongs to them. You've also got political unrest within Israel itself. They, they can't agree on who ought to be Prime Minister. They're having a series of general elections, all of which are inconclusive. And then with, you've also got uh, political tensions within the Palestinian community itself between Hamas, which is doing the, the attacking from Gaza, and the Palestine Liberation Organization. So both sides have got their own internal politics as well as external politics. And then you've got the outside countries like Iran, etc., who also want to buy into the controversy. This morning, Israeli tanks were filmed heading towards the border with Gaza. Israel says it's too early to say whether there'll be a ground offensive, but it's preparing for all contingencies.
violence. What the media have failed to report is that this tension, this, this violence, is the result of uh, uh, an incitement which has been going on for weeks. At the beginning of Ramadan, uh, there was the beginning of incitement by the Palestinian Authority, by Hamas, calling Palestinian Arabs to holy war, as a result of which there were attacks on Jews in Jerusalem in the streets, requiring hospitalization, attacks in the streets, attacks on the light railway. Uh, there were attempts to arrest them. There were then violent disturbances by the Arabs. And what then happened, uh, as Ramadan proceeded, was that the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the, uh, the supposedly holy uh, place uh, uh, for uh, uh, Muslims, uh, was turned into a theater of war. Chaos and confrontation inside the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound as Israeli police fire stun grenades to disperse Muslim worshippers. At around 20 past 7, all of a sudden, a huge force of police attacked Muslim worshippers who were inside the mosque. The police also fired tear gas and rubber bullets at Palestinian protesters. They say they responded after stones, bottles and fireworks were thrown at them. Al-Quds Day, also known as Jerusalem Day, falls on the last Friday of the fasting month of Ramadan. The annual event is a protest against Israel's rule of Jerusalem. Um, and as I think you may um, yourself have referred to, this extraordinary uh, piece uh, 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 broadcast uh, by the uh, senior Hamas operative saying explicitly, uh, cut the throats uh, of the Jews, and this is a holy war against what he called Jews and polytheists, which I believe is a kind of euphemism for Christians. So that's what we're in here. We're in an Islamic holy war incited by Mahmoud Abbas and the Hamas. Um, and being sanitized, misrepresented quite wickedly by the Western media. What you're, what you're doing is taking the law into your own hands, but I'm afraid we are out of time. Thank you very much for explaining your perspective. We'll leave it to the viewers to draw their conclusions. This was the same thing that Jesus was talking about in Luke 21 when he said, when you see Jerusalem being surrounded by armies and you will know that its desolation is near, there will be wrath, he said, against this people and they will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Well, we know that happened in the year 70 AD. He says, in Jerusalem will be trampled on by Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. So for the next 1,897 years, Jerusalem was under the control. It was literally trampled under by Gentiles or non-Jews until something completely unexpected happened in, in June 7, 1967, when we find the prognosis that was that Israel was going to be wiped out by the Arab nations. Instead, the opposite happened, and they recaptured the city of Jerusalem. They didn't take it away from the Palestinians. The Palestinian is a make-believe name for a group of people that never existed, never had a national identity. Palestine was a region and not a nation. It was Jordan, the country of Jordan, that controlled that entire area, including the city of Jerusalem. Rockets from Gaza again fell on southern Israeli cities tonight, and the Israelis retaliated once more. And behind all this, a land so divided for so long feels right now extremely tense.